By the grace of Christ, let us read from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 8, and verse 4. For when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. As he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on a rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. But when he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him, let him hear. Then the disciples asked him, saying, What does this parable mean? And he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. Amen. And let us also read a few verses from the letter of the Apostle Peter. Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. First letter of Peter, 2, 1. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure, pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as to a living stone, Rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they are also appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who, who once were not a people, but now, are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Amen. Today, in this small church, to all of us, the sower has gone forth to sow his word. His holy word, his true word, his divinely inspired word, that when it falls to the ground, it is like rain that sprouts forth, that gives growth to whatever has been, has been sowed. The sower went out to sow. And only the disciples, and I believe that if we are something, at least we are disciples of Jesus Christ and nothing more, woe to us if we ever believe that we are teachers, theologians, or something. 
having the authenticity of interpretation of the scriptures or that we think that we are something special because the Apostle Paul assures us by the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God that if somebody thinks that he is something while he is nothing, he deceives himself and we do not want to deceive, at least from now on, ever ourselves. We are nothing. I am nothing. But the sower went out to sow his seed. The Lord has come. He sowed. And he gave us a joyful message. A joyful message. A message of joy, of praise, and of thanksgiving. For all of us. But Christ, but God gives. The question is, do I receive? That is the question. Christ gives. Do you receive? He gives openly. He sows his word richly. Will you take his word? Will you take his seed? Because... Our Lord Jesus Christ testifies that while the sower went out to sow, other seeds fell by the road, on the side, on the wayside, there where the paths are. In the old times, I've lived, these, lived this, there wasn't any asphalt or streets there where the fields were. There were paths. And everyone would walk, walk through the path so he can go to his own field because he did not want to step on his own field, but neither on the stranger's field. And how had the paths been formed on their own? Somebody started, started, the other one followed, and paths had been started. One or two people could pass, and when one walk single file, there were no roads, there were no building blocks, there were just fields. And there were the paths <coughs> that many times paths became boundaries of fields. So the, so the seed, the good seed, fell on the wayside <coughs> and the trampled ground. No result. No result because? Because the seed cannot enter. And according to the interpretation of our Lord, the seed cannot enter the heart because the heart has, as we read, evil, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, condemnation, and it is trampled ground. So the pure milk, we cannot drink it as babes, so we cannot grow, therefore the word of God goes to waste. Why? Because we have bitterness in us. And I want to tell you something, that most of the times, bitterness and hatred that may exist in us and jealousy, even though our heart excuses it because this man did and said this against me or that, in reality, it is imaginations of the devil with the fiery darts of the enemy who strikes because there is no faith and he strikes the hearts of the unbelievers. In the church, my dear brethren, there are holy brothers and sisters. If you haven't understood this yet, this so significant thing, at least learn it. Holy brothers and sisters, don't be wicked. Don't think second thoughts. Don't ponder. And if somebody fell, even if he fell seven times, the Lord will raise him. You must be careful. You who think wickedly and you have wicked thoughts, let you fall and never get up again. The church of Christ is not made of man. It is heavenly. It is always covered with the blood of Christ. 
and always flooded with the Holy Spirit. If you have despised brethren and churches in your heart, I'm afraid that you will fall and never get up again. No church, no brother, do I have the right to judge because I will be judged. Especially to convict because I will be convicted. To condemn because I'm already condemned if I do this. I have the right to do this to no brother, no church, and no other man of God. Why? Because this is what my king wants. Because this is what my Lord wants. Because this is his command. And I do not discuss the commands of my king. I do not negotiate. And when I see going angry and going protesting left and right and saying, why, how, and what? Christ is not your king then. He's not. It's a finished deal. You are without a king because if the Lord were your king, he would tell you, be quiet. Quiet down and your peace and your conviction is your strength. Believe in the gospel. Learn from me that I am meek and humble in the heart. Do not condemn. Do not judge. If these words do not reach your heart, then you do not have a king. You will fall and never rise again. For that reason, my dear brethren, today, not only will we seek Christ as our king, but first we will repent because he is not. We will first repent. If we do not repent, there's no future. Trampled ground. But also in the field, there is a part that has stones in it. There, there are rocks. If you go to Calamo, to my house, it's, it's a rock. Nothing can grow there. In order for me to plant a tree, I, can, I, I brought dirt. And so we can build a house, we had to break rock with a drill. I have planted a lemon tree 50 years now, and it's this tall. It is produced like a small lemon this size. Why? Because it's on a rock. It's planted on a rock. There are rocks all around. Nothing can grow there. No matter what you plant, it won't, it won't grow. Only wild trees can grow there. And this dirt that has rocks, only wild trees can grow. They bear no good fruit, though. They take up the ground as well either bushes or anything wild, it will grow there. It is not the seed of the sower, but it is the seed of the other sower. So, my dear brethren, it is not only that the good sower went out to sow good seed. There is also the bad sower that sows his bad seed. And if you accept the seed of the good sower, then he will become your king. If you accept the seed of the bad sower, he will become your king. So you cannot have two kings. It's impossible for you to have two kings, two lords. <laughs> you will either love the one, the bad sower, and hate the other one, the good sower, or you will hate the one, the bad sower, and the good sower, the other one, you will become attached. It is a welcome time, and it is a day of repentance, so that the king may come and reign over good ground. There's also the other ground now. that has thorns and briars. thorns and there the the seed falls but there other seeds have been sown thorns briars poison ivy and all the wild wild grass and the good seed falls there among them and they grow together the word of god along with man's word 
the word of God along with the cares of men and the agony of men and the worries and the fears of men and the desires of men and the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the arrogance of life all together they grow they grow and the good sow seed also grows but it doesn't bear fruit it becomes useless today the sower went out to sow his seed the issue is my heart what state is my heart in because there is the good ground the good soil what does good soil mean good ground without cunningness without wickedness without offense without thoughts without evil nothing nothing but goodness God is good without offense without anger without nothing 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 good ground and profitable ground it bears fruit it accepts and it rejoices over the Word of God. It weeps with the Word of God. Spirit of a humble person, good ground. A contrite heart, good ground. And trembling before the Word of God, perfect ground. There the seed falls. God so sends His rain. It grows and it bears a hundredfold fruit. It bears good fruit. You know what it means for you to run and run and never see results of your toil and your labor? Never see results of the labor of your hands? To never see the work of God? To never see the Word of God working in your life as He works among all the brethren? And why? Because you were not careful so that the Word of God, when it is sown, where is it sown? So today, I want Christ to be my king. But first, I repent. Change my heart, Lord. I do not want it to be trampled ground. Change me, Lord Jesus. I do not want it to be full of, of thorns and, and, and rocks where it will grow and, and then wither away and it's temporary. I don't want it. I don't want the devil to have sown in me cares and worries and riches and desires of the eyes, desires of the flesh, ambitions, wickedness, evil, hatred. Clear out my heart, Lord, please. Blessed are the clean, pure in heart, because they will always see the Lord. Clean out my heart, Lord Jesus. Clean out my heart. And the heart, my dear brethren, cannot be cleansed except with repentance, confession, and return and with the blood of Christ. Cannot be cleansed otherwise. And a dirty heart brings forth dirty things. Out of the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth. So you can understand what kind of a heart you have. Listen to what you say. Listen carefully to what you say. And so I can say it more correctly. Think carefully about what you're thinking. Because it's not only for us to say them, but we can say them out loud, but we can also say them from within us. In order for me to understand today if my heart is good and kind so that it may bear a hundredfold fruit, I must th sit around and think of what I say on the outside and what I say on the inside. And say then, I repent. I repent for these thoughts of mine. I repent for these words that I said. I repent for everything, Lord. Clean out my heart. Why? Because I want your word to grow. And I want you, my Lord Jesus, to be my king. If the word of God does not grow in my heart, Christ cannot become your king. He cannot become. So for that reason, what does the apostle Peter say so well? So rejecting all hatred, all envy, all hypocrisy, envy, conviction, all these things. Malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. And then as ye newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, and then you will indeed taste that the Lord is good. Otherwise, there's no growth. Otherwise, you will know no gracious God in your life. When you judge, when you believe others that have become proud, when you believe that others 
have taken up authority in their hands that did not belong to them, when you believe that somebody speaks bad toward you, all these things, my dear brethren, is a dirty heart. And even if you're right, if Christ is the king, he will tell you, beat evil with good. Love suffers long. Love forgives. Love does not meditate on evil. Love loves. And love is the bond of perfection. Love covers, covers a multitude of sins. You have no love and that is why you cannot cover the multitude of sins of the other or of yourself. Your sins either. May God keep us. For that reason, my dear brethren, when we reject these things, we come to the Lord as to a living stone, rejected indeed by man, but chosen by God and precious. We approach God as a living stone that is unique, a chief cornerstone, so that we may be built on this stone. I do not want to be alone, thrown at a side and not being able to be with all my brethren that are built on this chief cornerstone. And you as living stones who have been built up and have accepted the stone that people reject, then you are being built up a spiritual house. Lord Jesus, listen to this. You are being built up in a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices which are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Do you understand where you can be built when the Lord is your king? On the chief cornerstone. And then you are being built and your family is being built as a spiritual house, a royal priesthood. Why? Holy priesthood, why? For no other reason other than to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. This is a Christian. This is the spiritual house. You do not know are, do you not know that you are a house of God, a temple of God, because the Holy Spirit dwells in you? Are you? You are. But are you a spiritual house? Are you a royal priesthood? I do not know this about you, and you do not know about me. God knows for everyone, but I also know for myself and you for yourself. Today you know it, if the Word of God convicts you. Today you know that you've messed up. Today you know that you are... The exact way that he tells you, and I know what the Word of God tells us. For that reason, I have to repent. We have to repent because I want to be a spiritual household. I want to be a royal priesthood. I want to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God. I do not want to pray and God say, I don't, I'm not, not listening to you. I don't want you. Listen to what David says. I read this and my, whole, my soul was so joyful. When the Lord reigns, then Moses and Aaron and Samuel called upon the Lord and he listened to them. Why? Because they had the king as the Lord as their king. I want my prayers to be heard. They called upon the Lord and the Lord heard them. In a pillar of smoke with the power of the Holy Spirit, he spoke to them. For that reason, they kept his wet testimonies and the commands that he gave to them. And God, who heard them, was a God who forgave them and he was vengeful for their deeds. My dear brethren, God is not love. God is love, yes, he is. But he is also consuming fire, he is forgiving. But he is also, he also avenges. Do you want, what do you want your king to be against you? Forgiving or vengeful? Forgive it. Oh, forgive us, Lord. God forbid. I want to be built. 
Christ gives me the chief cornerstone to go and stand. He tells me what to reject and clear out my heart with. And he gives me the command to go and build myself in a spiritual house to become a royal priesthood so that I may offer spiritual sacrifices that are welcome to God and that God may hear me and God answer me and God intervene and that God Christ be my king and that I see no evil in my life any longer because he is my defender, my Lord and my God. For this reason it says in the scripture, Behold, I set in Zion the chief, cornerst uh, chief cornerstone, elect and precious, and he who believes in him will by no means put to shame. And this is the word of God that was sown by the sower today. It is a chosen stone. He who believes on him will by no means put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. God gives honor today because we believe. Do we believe? Because today we believe in the word of God. What does we believe mean? We accept it. We do not negotiate it. We do not discuss it. We say that it is the word of God as it is in truth, and it works and it acts in our life. But to those who are disobedient, he will become a chief cornerstone, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. You will hear the word of God because you are disobedient and you will become offended. You will hear the word of God because you are disobedient and you will stumble. Amazing. I hear the word of God and I stumble. And I say, what is this man telling us now? And what is he saying? What is he saying? It's not like this. I know. I stumble. I trip. And I become offended. Why? Because I am not of those who believe to whom honor belongs. But I am those who are disobedient. Why? Because my heart is wayside or it has stones or it has thorns and briars. And does not accept the word of God as a word of God that it is. And the word of God cannot work in me. For that reason, God says, you who believe, to whom honor is due, you who believe and whom, uh, whose heart I clean, clean, you who believe and are precious and you want Christ to be your king and him alone, you are a chosen generation. You are born and raised of God. You're born of God. You're a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You're kings and priests of the Most High. You who believe, you who do not stumble in the Word, you do not trip on the Word, you do not become offended with the Word, but you accept the Word of God that Christ sows. You are a holy nation. His own special people. with the holy blood of his beloved Son, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. If, my dear brethren, it is the end of the story, you, we do not clear out our heart. We do not accept the word of God as a word of God that it is. If we let our mind think of various different things that are not in the things the word of God says, then we cannot proclaim his virtues and his praises. We will speak and nothing will happen. We will build and the Lord will destroy like Esau. You say they destroyed, now we'll build again things that are better and greater. And God says, you will build and I will destroy. It is not for us to play with God. You know what it means for you to build and God to destroy? May God keep us. Why? Because while it was sown by the sower, the good seed, you think. We mustn't think of these things. We say amen to our king. We testify. We approach God as guilty men. We want, we repent, we want Christ. We've made many mistakes. What can we do? We're all men. We're not without mistakes. But today when it's a welcome day and it's a day of salvation, today we want the one who gives to make us able to also receive. 
We do not want to leave this place without the word of God sown into our heart. We do not want to leave without taking from Christ the thing that he wants, and that is to be our king. Christ gives, and I want to take. I want to receive, and today and always, so that even though I was not a people of God, now God makes me. I was not. I was in the church, but I wasn't a people of God. Because what did my heart have in it? Evil, hypocrisy, deceit, and all the rest. Laziness. You know what it is? There's, there's church and I stay home because why? Because my wife isn't home, she's gone to work, I don't go to church. But do you understand what you're doing, my brother? Do you understand what you're doing? You sit in front of a computer and you play and play and play and the gospel of Christ is next to you open, but you never read it. Do you realize what you're doing? And you think that you're a people of God and you receive communion of the body and blood of Christ? Unto blessing, unto condemnation, if we do not repent today. If we do not repent with all our heart. If we do not repent truly by testifying and admitting that we all stumble in many things. Then you will be a people of God. Then you will be, have obtained mercy of the Lord. God will show you mercy. And to the thing where there is no boundary is the mercy of God. I want the mercy of God in my life. I want to be of those who received mercy from the Lord. I do not want to be of those who think and I come and I wear my good clothes and I wear my good dress and I wear my good suit and I'm modest and my hair is combed well, but my heart is full of other things, either it be stones or rock or chapel ground or thorns and briars. I want my heart today to be transformed by God. I want it to become good ground and good soil so that the word which I've heard to bear fruit a hundredfold. Amen.